Hi, I'm Mike Stanton. It's March 19th. This is the BAM Weekly Muni Market Update. I'm here with Grant Dewey and Brian Babler from BAM's Capital Markets Desk. Thank you for joining me, gentlemen. Um, you know, it's an old journalist's trick to uh, focus on anniversaries. And this year is the one year anniversary of uh, over $12.5 billion of outflows from municipal bond mutual funds as the country was really diving into the worst of the lockdowns following the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. You can always say what a difference a year makes. Uh, this week, uh, we reported $1.3 billion of inflows. Uh, so a very different market environment. Why don't we start with you, Grant, and talk about uh, what you saw this week. Yeah, that's interesting. We remember it well, Mike, as uh, working uh, for bond insurer. Those were, those were very uh, hectic, busy weeks. But you know, rate-wise, we had another uh, you know pretty turbulent week this week. The 10-year touched a 175 yesterday and a 250 on the long bond, which uh, were 12 month highs. Um, you know, but you know, on the muni side, we're still being bolstered by, you know, the stimulus monies, uh, talk of higher marginal tax rates on their way. Uh, we're still having pretty manageable supply, you know, particularly if you are focusing on tax exempt uh, paper. Um, you know, there's uh, a lot of direct aid to muni market issuers. So, it certainly was critical funding uh, for some states that were hit the hardest, probably like New York and California, but also a bit of a windfall uh, for many others. So obviously this is a credit uh, positive um, for our for our market. Um, uh, as I had mentioned, I think before uh, Moody's Analytics originally thought there would be about a $500 billion revenue shortfall um, nationally based on uh, pandemic related um, uh, conditions and and uh, that was adjusted to just 61 billion net of some aid that had already come in. So you know, with 350 billion of direct aid, I kind of I sort of uh, you know to me it's akin to a 1,400 dollars stimulus check for all Americans, not just <laughs> not just for those below certain income levels. So, uh, but there is despite the kind of the positive technicals. Uh, you know, there is a, a focus shifting to inflationary expectations, higher rates, and, and certainly that's going to hit any fixed income asset class. And so we started seeing that um, later in the week, uh, muni yields were off about 10 to 15 uh, basis points. And, um, and so, you know, we'll, we'll see. There's been a reset in rates, quite obviously, uh, but there's still, you know, the market tone is still uh, reasonably reasonably strong and resilient. And the, uh, the, the bulk of that reset in rates came after the week's uh, major new issues were priced. Uh, so Brian, why don't we talk uh, through what you saw in the uh, primary market calendar? Yeah, uh, you know, so this week was uh, the first time since about mid-December that uh, supply hit nearly 12 billion. I think uh, final tallies are about 11.8 billion or so. So that's definitely the heaviest we've seen in a number of months. Um, and, and generally speaking, it sounded like the deals, uh, particularly the ones that came earlier in the week, definitely continue to perform very well. Uh, we keep talking about the fund flows that are that are staying positive and, and the market continuing to be uh, boosted by uh, by the technical supply and demand uh, factors. So, you know, you saw things uh, like 1.2 billion Illinois GOs get accelerated into Tuesday and have yields adjusted lower by anywhere from 15 to 25 basis points from pre-marketing uh, levels earlier in the week. Um, but then, you know, you saw deals that came later in the week, uh, you know, after Wednesday and Thursday sell-off, um, didn't, you know, still got done, but uh, but took some minor yield adjustments. One of the bigger deals this week, a billion eight dorm pits. Uh, the read on that was that it took uh, anywhere from two to five basis point cuts to, um, uh, to from pre-marketing to uh, to final pricing, but that's in the face of uh, the MMD scale getting cut nine basis points. So, uh, you know, generally speaking, still did uh, still did kind of okay. But um, you know, this rate move definitely having an impact on uh, on taxable uh, refundings. Um, you know, the last two weeks uh, have uh, taxables have only been about uh, around 18 or 20 percent of the supply picture. Next week, that'll go down a little bit. Um, it's anticipated just about a, a billion seven is going to be taxable uh, or about 16 percent. Um, so, you know, those deals are definitely kind of starting to fall out of the money and, and underwriters are watching those carefully. Um, but, uh, but, you know, it still should continue to be um, pretty robust. 
Um, for BAM, uh, our, our activity was uh, was pretty active this week. We priced nearly 180 million uh, in the primary market. Those were highlighted uh, by particularly, again, we continue to say uh, higher quality issue issues continue to use insurance. Uh, some of our larger transactions this week included uh, Lafayette Water and Sewer in Indiana, which carried a double A minus rating uh, that was 37 million priced by RW Baird. On the competitive market, uh, RW Baird also used BAM on 13 million Wyoming County, New York GOs, uh, which carry a double A3 rating. Uh, and then away from those, uh, we also insured a, a $16 million deal for uh, Excelsior Springs, Missouri, uh, which was a sales tax bond uh, and priced by DA Davidson. Um, so pretty active um, this week. Next week, uh, supply will dip down a little bit, uh, about 10.6 billion or so scheduled to be priced. Uh, again, you know, the New York train continues, uh, a billion New York City TFAs. Um, we'll also see uh, about 700 million Maryland uh, Transportation Authority, which BAM is actually providing a, a surety policy for that deal. Uh, 700 million Cal Pub Works, uh, 500 million Central Texas Regional Mobility Authority, and then um, what could end up being a highlight deal for BAM next week, 437 million for San Jose Airport, uh, which uh, BAM has been awarded in the event that insurance is used. So we'll be watching that, uh, that deal closely. Um, away from that, uh, we'll also be insuring 60 million for Rowan University uh, in New Jersey, uh, which is gonna be priced by Citigroup. Uh, and again, we'll be watching, uh, we'll be watching San Jose and, uh, and see how that shakes out. Thanks. And, you know, interesting point you raise about uh, the taxable advance or funding uh, space, you know, down in DC this week, there's been some uh, more uh, uh, momentum behind uh, legislation to restore the ability of municipal issuers to sell tax exempt advance or funding. So uh, there's legislation uh, sponsored by Senator Wicker from Mississippi uh, that seems to be getting uh, more support and may be a part of a infrastructure package later this year. Certainly, uh, the argument that uh, issuers are, are being locked out of the taxable advance or funding market because of the change in interest rates uh, can only help that cause. So uh, we'll see how it plays out. When the market is unpredictable, BAM gives you certainty. In the face of market volatility and illiquidity, BAM insured municipal bonds deliver default protection, value preservation, and a durable AA rating from S&P. BAM's insurance protects against everything that causes a default, and adding BAM insured municipal bonds to your portfolio is easy. Talk to your investment advisor, visit buildamerica.com, or look for BAM eligible bonds on the Perform Portfolio Management System. BAM. Build America Mutual.